So yeah, by clicking on this video, you already know that I quit my dream job as a veterinarian this year. Hey guys, welcome back to Bella Vet. Um, so yeah, by clicking on this video, you already know that I quit my dream job as a veterinarian this year. And um, yeah, it was my dream job coming out of vet school. I knew I didn't want to do an internship because I didn't want to specialize. I didn't want to become like a surgeon or cardiologist or radiologist or anything like that. Um, I wanted to be an ER doctor. So I accepted a position um, as part of a mentorship program um, in emergency medicine. And when I first got there, the mentorship felt really strong and um, anytime I had a question, it got answered and I felt really supported, especially in comparison to some of my classmates who uh, were, were really unsupported early on in their careers. Then I started to see some doctors resigning and I thought, you know, maybe it's them, maybe they just don't like working at a corporate practice. Um, but then I started to see some of my favorite uh, doctors resigning and I just, I started to worry a bit. And fast forward about six months in, um, I started to realize that there was a lot of mentorship at the microscopic level, at the shift to shift level. You know, if I had a question, there's someone there to answer it, but there just wasn't that same mentorship on a larger scale. And, you know, there weren't transparent goals that were measurable to be met. Um, and then about six months in, I had a meeting with my mentor and I was told that I wasn't meeting their expectations. And I started to realize that a sustainable work-life balance just wasn't really achievable at this hospital. And my shifts would, that were already 12 hours, would quickly turn into, you know, 14 and 16 hour shifts. And um, the overnights really started to take a toll. And, you know, you get a lot of off time in ER. Um, you usually only work three or four days a week, but a lot of that off time is spent recovering and spent, you know, switching your body clock from days to nights or nights to days. And I would joke with my family, I'd be like, I feel so hungover today. And it's not because I had any fun. It was because, you know, I feel jet lagged and I'm trying to switch my body clock over. And there's a lot of lack of sleep that comes with that. Um, and, you know, I did make a couple mistakes in my first year out and mentally that was really hard to handle and my mental health did take a pretty big hit and the stress became, a, it was a lot, it became too much. I lost 15 pounds um, just because when I'm stressed my body just doesn't, it stops being hungry. Um, and long story short, it just wasn't the right fit and I really didn't want to accept that. And then four veterinarians committed suicide uh, in the United States. And one of those um, went to my vet school and she graduated the year before me. And I started to ask myself, was I really happy in ER or was it just what I thought would make me happy? And I realized I went into ER because it scared me and I was intimidated by it. And I didn't want to be intimidated by emergencies for the rest of my career. So I decided to dive in head first. And I am still proud of myself for having that mindset of facing my fears. Um, but one thing that I've learned through the first year of being in practice is that the absence of fear is not the same thing as happiness. And just because you aren't afraid of something does not mean that that thing makes you happy. And at this point in the process, I was crying every day, sometimes multiple times a day because um, I was finally coming to terms with the fact that I needed to leave this job and I needed to find a place that valued, you know, mental health and a sustainable work-life balance. So I started looking for a new job and I, tried to ask myself, you know, what is my current job missing? And 
I found out that, you know, I really missed making connections with, <laughs> I really miss making connections with patients, long-standing connections with patients and their owners. And in vet school, I knew that that was something that that I really loved doing and that I really wouldn't get on emergency. So, you know, have, taking my first job, I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I don't really need that. And after a year in, in practice, I realized that I really do need that and I really want that to be part of my job. And, you know, another thing that I missed was being able to prevent diseases. And I saw firsthand what happens when a puppy isn't vaccinated against parvo or lepto. And, um, you know, I've had to treat those preventable diseases. And um, that's something that I would really love to be a part of helping my patients avoid those situations. And the idea of working during the day sounded pretty nice. <laughs> so I reached out to a friend who was a practice owner and a veterinarian um, who I had met in vet school and he told me what I had already been feeling but just hadn't really put into words yet and he said, well, yep, sounds like you're on the road to burnout, kid. And I definitely was, 100%. <laughs> And we talked about how important your mental health is and how putting yourself and your well-being and your mental health first um, isn't selfish and it's actually a requirement to be the best doctor you can be and to provide the highest level of care to your patients. And I uh, tend to think how you feel sitting in your car before your shift says a lot about how you feel about your job. And for me, I was a ball of anxiety the entire day before my shift and when I put on my work jacket, I felt like I was putting on, you know, my armor to go into battle and that's just not how you're supposed to feel. I really want to work at a place where I'm excited to go into work or at least neutral. <laughs> I, I want the reason that I'm not excited to be because I just got up too early and hadn't had my caffeine yet, not because I was worried about what would happen. Um, and I know that there will be good days and bad days and there'll be some days that I don't look forward to, but it shouldn't be every day. So I started to interview at a couple clinics and um, they were all great, but one really stood out and they just seemed organized and overall pretty happy. And I was being offered the mentorship that I needed. You know, there's a lot of amazing experience that I got in this job over the past year, um, but there's a lot of things that I hadn't dealt with like ear infections and dentistry and things like that. So I needed, you know, to fill those gaps a little bit and you know, they're, they're offering to help me do that. And so I took the job. And then I got mono <laughs> and I was stuck to this couch for a good two to three weeks and I felt terrible. And um, I'm not really sure how I got it given my pandemic lack of a dating life, but <laughs> I must have shared a drink with someone stupidly at some point. Uh, and yeah, that really sucked, but it forced me to stop and it forced me to stop pushing so hard and to stop caring so much about what other people thought of me um, and it helped me focus on what really mattered. So, silver lining. <laughs> and now I'm about to start my new job and I know it won't be perfect. I just need it to be better. I just need an improvement. And I know I've been pretty absent online lately and this is why. <laughs> and um, you know, this is all I've really been wanting to talk about and it just felt really disingenuous to be posting about cool cases or pre-vet tips when, you know, I all I wanted to talk about was what to do when your career plans fall apart. <laughs> and uh, I was in a really dark place mentally and I just didn't want to fake a smile, so I just didn't post. And now that I have just barely made it through the storm, <laughs> um, I have some perspective now and I have a lot of lessons to share with you. First of all, you being here is what matters most and your mental health is one of the most important things to protect. So, you know, if you need to leave that job, go. If you need to drop that internship, do it. And if you need to leave vet med altogether, I will be the first in line cheering you on when you start your new adventure. 
and there will be consequences to these decisions and it won't be easy, it'll be really hard. Um, but if staying in a bad environment means your mental health suffers, then it's just not worth it. And there's a really amazing organization called Not One More Vet and I'll link a bunch of their stuff below. Please go check it out no matter if you're feeling happy or sad or whatever. It's an amazing organization to be a part of and to learn about and to just know that it's there for you whenever you need it. Another lesson I learned is a work-life balance is a requirement, it's not a luxury. Another lesson, you know, I've done quite a few interviews this year and um, at the end of the interview they usually ask, well, do you have any questions for us? And I always say yes, I do. And I ask this question and I say, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what makes a successful veterinarian in general. Uh, what I want to know is what do you think makes a successful veterinarian at this hospital specifically? Like, who's your rock star and what qualities make them your rock star? Their answer will tell you a lot. If they say, you know, oh, our rock star is the one who, you know, always stays that extra hour, always comes in early, is really case hungry, always takes that extra case, always does the extra thing, goes the extra mile, like, that's great. And that sounds like a really positive answer, but, you might want to just keep it in the back of your head that that this place might not have the best work-life environment. And um, at my new job, when I asked that question, um, they said, what makes a successful veterinarian at this hospital is really amazing client communication. And I'll have even more lessons to come on how stress affects different people differently and um, what it's like to transition from ER to general practice and you know how real mentorship is structured and mental health and vet med why I have a therapist and you should probably too so uh, that's it that's the video for today I will have much more you know hopefully cheery videos to come um but yeah i hope you guys like this or i hope you learn something or feel updated i guess um and uh, if you want to follow along be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell notification icon and i'll see you guys next time Bye.